He is a phenomenal child. We have two phenomenal children. And every time I look at my son, I remember when we, we gave birth, I looked at him and I thought, I've done it. I've done the thing that I was told wasn't possible. I brought this child into the world and there is nothing wrong with him like they said was going to be. And if I can do that, I can go solo. If I can do that, I can make this organization bigger than I ever expect or anticipated it to be. And so I did. I decided not to go back to work. The real mum's pulpit, I had reignited it. But what happened is in the social media, where the page was very much still going, and thank God we obviously had a management committee, so they were very much taking everything on whilst I was on maternity leave. There was this revolution of women who knew that it was okay to say, I'm a mum and an ex-lawyer. I'm a mum and a consultant for social media. I'm a mum and an accountant. These were women who came from positions of power who life had just thrown a circumstance where going back to work wasn't possible, but they knew that just being a mum, sitting at home, being a full-time mum, which is great for some, but for the tribe that I was leading and leading, it isn't. It's okay to run the two boats, the two ships, one professionally and two be a, a mum personally. And so I knew that the Real Mums Pulpit wasn't the platform for that. The Real Mums Pulpit was about supporting the mum behind the baby. Um, but I needed, I felt it was my job to harness this excitement, this, this revolution. And we're going back four years ago. So the term mumpreneur wasn't the buzzword that it is now. Um, you know, and it, it was almost a bit of a taboo to have it all. You know, can you have it all? Well, yes, you can. Sometimes not all at the same time, but yes, you can. And so I, on a whim, never expected what I have today in Mumpreneurs and Cake to be to, to have happened. But I just set up a social media page. Had I known the success it was going to get now, I would have set up a page, but I didn't. I set up a group. I'm not great with social media, still not. <laughs> and so I set up a group because the idea was to get the ladies from the Real Mums Pulpit who was very interested in um, reinventing themselves and showcasing who they were professionally to get them just to pop over to that social platform and connect with each other and support each other on their entrepreneurial journey. But actually what happened is overnight, organically, Mumpreneurs and K became an entity in its own right. And before I knew it, I was now effectively hosting, leading another organisation that I knew how to do it because I had already started the Real Mums Pulpit, but it was just with a different audience, it was just with a different focus. And so Mumpreneurs and MK again became a non-for-profit organisation. To date, we have over 1,400 women on our database that constantly connect with us. We put on networking events, we run the MMC, which is a monthly business masterminding group, which again is very much about supporting the women behind the business. We do events, we host events, we are a research agency for lots of different companies who want to know more about the mumpreneur sector and speak directly to mumpreneurs. We have um, an awful lot of lately media coverage. We've been endorsed by the BBC who use us to represent the mumpreneur sector within the three counties. We've, I was going to say recently, it's not recently, in January last year, we moved into our headquarters in the Brunel Business Centre in Bletchley, which is a wonderful, fresh space. We've gone for lots of funding, which is from some corporate companies like IKEA, John Lewis, the co-op. So we really have created an organisation that started from a tribe. And so when I say I am the accidental entrepreneur, I really mean that. I'm in a situation now where I'm being approached to write a book that showcases my journey, how I've done what I've done, giving case studies of the women that I work with. I didn't set out to do any of this, but I knew I was capable. And so I'm, I'm, I completely 100% agree with our speaker who just spoke that said, sometimes you just have to completely 100% trust your own instincts, be confident in your own abilities, don't worry about what the etiquette should be of an entrepreneur. 
don't worry about what the next entrepreneur is doing and how their success is going and does that match or mirror yours that's not important what's important is that you are creating your own empire with it your own message that makes its own impact that serves the world in its own way because if we all do that and if we are all confident with that and we all know what our role is to what we are doing collectively there brings about change so that is very much my journey i run mumpreneurs mk as a non-for-profit organization very established non-for-profit organization i run the real month pulpit which is kind of where it all started again a very successful organization that is endorsed by some great companies commercial companies i also have opened up my own coaching practice last year which works with women mums mumpreneurs and female entrepreneurs some people say i'm a feminist and i think i am perhaps maybe not the bra burning type but i do feel that as women we are the secret super superheroes of this world sorry men in the room <laughs> but i do i think we're very resilient we're very resourceful we're very robust but we just have an inherent nature to make it happen and it's very very important that when you realize that about yourself and you understand that's your gift find other women that are with that can resonate with that surround yourself with networks attach yourself to groups if i had done that at the beginning i probably would achieve this level of success sooner but that wasn't